Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 7.4, Writing Equations in Two Variables Lesson. Pause while you write Section 7.4 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is write equations in two variables and determine whether an ordered pair is a solution of an equation. Copy the following key ideas and examples exactly as they appear into your notebook. Tables, graphs, and equations. You can use tables and graphs to represent equations in two variables. The table and graph below represent the equation y equals x plus 2. Be sure you copy the entire table and its graph into your math notebook. The study tip off to the left is important too, but you don't need to copy it. It just reminds you that when you draw a line through the points, you graph all of the solutions of the equation. The second key idea starts up above the box. It says you can model many rate problems by using the distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. Where d is the distance traveled, r is the speed, and t is the time. When you are Given a speed, you can use the formula to write an equation in two variables that represents the situation. So the key idea is the distance formula. To find the distance traveled, multiply the speed, r, by the time, t. So your formula looks like this, d equals rt. And you need to remember that speed is one example of a rate. Today we'll be starting on page 316 in your math textbook. You wrote the definitions that are at the top of the page and in the middle of the page during the last lesson, so you don't need to rewrite them. They're just there as reminders. Example 1, identifying solutions of equations in two variables. Tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the equation. Letter A, y equals 2x. And we're looking at 3, 6 as our ordered pair. So we just put in 3 for the x value and 6 for the y value. So we put in 6 for y on the left, and the 3 we need to multiply by the 2. So when we do that, we have 2 times 3 equals 6, and since 6 equals 6, then 3, 6 is a solution for that equation. So we substitute and then we compare. Letter B. Y equals 4X minus 3 is our equation, and 4, 12 is the ordered pair. So Y is 12, so we put that on the left, and then we multiply 4, times x, which is 4, so that equals 16, and then 16 minus 3 equals 13. 12 does not equal 13, so 4, 12 is not a solution. Example 2, using an equation in two variables. The equation y equals 128 minus 8x gives the amount y in fluid ounces of milk remaining in a gallon jug after you pour x cups. Letter A says identify the independent and dependent variables because the amount y remaining depends on the number of x cups you pour, y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. So x can change every time, but y depends on how much you pour. So that makes y dependent and x independent. Letter B says how much milk remains in the jug after you pour 10 cups. Use the equation to find the value of y when x equals 10. So we write the equation, don't forget that step, and it says y equals 128 minus 8x, so we wrote that, 
and then we substitute 10 for x. So we have 8 times 10, so it's 128 minus 80, and when we simplify that, it equals 48. So there are 48 fluid ounces remaining. Example 3 is on page 317, and we're writing and graphing an equation in two variables. So this time we have to write the equation as well. It's not given to us. An athlete burns 200 calories weightlifting. The athlete then works out on an elliptical trainer and burns 10 calories for every minute. Write and graph an equation in two variables that represents the total number of calories burned during the workout. So the total number of calories burned, we don't know, so we're going to let C be the variable that stands for that. And we're going to find out what that equals, so that we're going to use an equal sign for that. Calories burned during weightlifting is 200. They tell us that in the problem. Plus the calories burned per minute times the number of minutes on the elliptical trainer. So that's going to be M. M is going to be the number of minutes on the elliptical trainer and it says in the problem that they burn 10 calories for every minute that they spend on the elliptical trainer. So it's 10 times M. So our equation is C equals 200 plus 10 times N. So to graph the equation, we first make a table and then we plot the ordered pairs and draw a line through the points. So let's take a look at our table. We're just going to take a stab at some numbers. We're just going to use some numbers of minutes. So we're going to say that somebody, this athlete, works out for 10 minutes on the elliptical trainer. And so our equation is up at the top of our table, C equals 200 plus 10M, and we're going to plug in 10 for the number of minutes. So when we do that, that means they burned 300 calories. So our ordered pair is 10 for the minutes and 300 for the calories. So remember, time always goes on the x-axis, and whatever else you have goes on the y-axis. So we have 10, 300 for our first point, and then we plug in 20 for our second point. So if they worked out for 20 minutes, they would burn 400 calories. So our second ordered pair is 2400. So we graph that point. And our third pair is 3500. So we graph that third point and then we connect the dots. So then we have our graph. And when, when we do our graph, remember that you need to label your axes and um, put, put the scale on there, put the numbers on the scale, and make it look like a true graph, have everything on there. And let's take a look at the box off to the left. It says, make sure you read and understand the context of the problem, because you cannot have a negative number of minutes. Use only whole number values of M. That's good advice. Our next problem is on page 318, and this is where we get to use our distance formula. So remember from the key ideas, distance equals rate times time. You're going to use this formula for your entire schooling, so write it down now and remember it forever. Example 4 is our real-life application. A train averages 40 miles per hour between two cities. Use a graph to show the relationship between the time and the distance traveled. So we're going to do this two different ways. Method one, we're going to use a ratio table. You can use a ratio table and multiplication to find equivalent rates. Then plot the ordered pairs, time, 
and distance from the table and draw a line through the points. So when we do that, it says that the train is traveling 40 miles per hour. So that's 40 miles for one hour, 40 for one. So that's the first value that goes in our ratio table. And so if it's going 40 miles in one hour, in two hours, it would be going 80 miles. And in four hours, it would be going 160 miles. So we're just multiplying to get across the ratio table, and we know how to do that. And in six hours, it would be going 240 miles. And so we plot all of those points and we make our graph, again, time, hours, goes on the x-axis and distance goes on the y-axis. And those are not labeled x and y, they're labeled t and d for time and distance. Method two is use an equation in two variables. Use the distance formula to write the equation d equals 40, because 40 is our rate, times t. Use the equation to make a table, then plot the ordered pairs and draw a line through the points as shown in the graph above. So it's the same graph. We end up with the same graph no matter which way we do this. So we use the same amounts of time, 1, 2, 4, and 6. Our equation is d equals 40t. And so if we go for one hour, it's d equals 40 times 1, so that gives us a distance of 40 miles, and our ordered pair is 140. And if we go for two hours, it's d equals 40 times 2, so that gives us a distance of 80 miles, so our ordered pair is 280, and so on down the table. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the On Your Own Problems 1 through 5 below. They're also on pages 316 to 318 of your math textbook. Show your work and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember, to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson, you must complete your exit slip, come to our next class prepared with the journal pages or other work from the flipped lesson completed, and be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have for the teacher and always have a good attitude. We'll see you next time in class.